Damn, there we go. We're live. And or Tony, excuse me. Thanks for joining me tonight. <laughs> Again, like I said before, uh, apologies for being late and apologies for everyone on that was expecting a stream on Twitch on Sunday. I know it's a little bit weird. We're going live on a Tuesday, but here we go. Tony, welcome to the show. So please, uh, if you don't mind, just uh, introduce yourself a little bit for the folks listening at home. Hey, how's it going, Gordon? Thanks for having me. Uh, so my full name, Tony Campos. Uh, I'm a resident in Virginia. I live close to DC, so I'm always seeing the accident or action. But uh, what I do full time is uh, I'm a digital marketing consultant. Uh, actually just started my own agency last year, 2020, Instinct Analytics Marketing. Yeah, perfect year uh, to start a company. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Everyone told me the same thing. It's crazy. Uh, but you know, I actually have been doing a lot of digital marketing work on the side. Uh, Sorry guys, it's real life. <laughs> but uh, I'd always done some uh, side projects wherever agency I was already at. Uh, the first thing I wanted to do out of college when I graduated was be my own marketing consultant, right? Help <laughs> businesses grow. I liked it. I it was a big sales guy beforehand. Uh, but now I was like, hey, I might as well use something I learned in college, right? I only paid 60, 70, $80,000 <laughs> for that degree. Uh, so I, I got into marketing and then uh, I started to specialize mostly in Google ads, uh, a lot of Facebook marketing, Microsoft Bing ads. So I'm mostly a search expert guy, but I started getting requests out of, you know, out of everywhere. Uh, and uh, the real goal was to uh, let me grow this company. I can have some passive income. I can learn new skills as I grow. I can bring it to my uh, workplace so I can share, you know, you're not always allowed to experiment at your nine to five, but I find that, you know, if you do it outside yourself, take all the risk yourself, no one's going to tell you no. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, you said you wanted to be in digital marketing. I mean, what made you decide that you want to start your own agency and why last year? Well, last year, especially, here's the story. I'm on Upwork. You can find me, uh, Tony Campos on Upwork. Uh, they require you to have a tax ID, right? And I'm more of a all in all out guy at that type of point. I'm like, okay, I have a tax ID. I might as well go get my LLC while I'm at it so I can pay myself a W-2, right? Mm -hmm. And from there, I was just like, well, now I have my LLC. I better have a website onto this, right? And then I got a website and I was like, well, now I have a website and I have clients uh, coming in. Uh, I need an intern. I so now I have an intern as well. Uh, and, you know, she's great with the web design and stuff. I think that's the, the best part about my company. It's a lot of the networking I've done, uh, people who, you know, I've been on projects with and, you know, it's not always their full time commitment, but I know they produce quality work. And mm -hmm. I know if I need someone to refer to, uh, well, any good consultant should be able to, you know, hunker down, study some stuff and learn a new material or something like that. Uh, it's always great to have an expert by your side uh, and an uh, expert friend. Sure. Hey, you know, and speaking of, you know, 2020 global pandemic hiring you know, was frozen at a lot of corporate companies, including my own. Yep. So, I mean, and of course, if you're hiring somebody, just even just an intern, I mean, that's a huge risk to take, especially right out the gate. Or did you have, and did you feel comfortable enough saying, yes, it's a startup, but I have a pillow here that I can start jumping into that? Uh, you know, I wasn't comfortable. I really wasn't. I was <laughs> More burn the ships kind of approach. <laughs> I was so terrified. Uh, Really, I had a great deal on LinkedIn uh, and this new advertising platform I use as well now. Uh, there was a deal that said, you know, promote your job posts for three days. And it's, it was really, really great sponsorship of the post. We got over 150 applicants, which tells you something about the state of the economy, right? I had people with years of experience from other industries at times. I remember one person in particular, she had been in the uh, construction 
industry for seven years already. And I was like, do you really want to make the switch to digital market? This is an intern position, right? She said, I want something a little bit more secure. Uh, you know, people can see that there was a need for digital marketing. Everyone went digital first. You can't go into stores anymore. You better have a nice website so people can look up your stuff. It better be searchable by Google. And if you're not advertising online, your competitor is. They're literally mm -hmm. advertising against your business right now. So, you know, just do a quick Google search. You know, if you own a coffee shop, if you own a bar, just look up bars near me. And if yours is not on top, uh, it should be. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but uh, so, to just kind of go back to the beginning of when you're first getting set up, set up, you said you went with LLC. Did you hire an attorney to navigate through that side of the business or did you just kind of DIY it? I know there's websites out there like LegalZoom, I think is a big one that everybody yeah. knows of. 100% bootstrap, man. I did it. I did it myself. I had to figure it out. I had to call the county. I had to call it. And <laughs> it's awful. Don't call the county. They they laugh at you if you don't right. know what you did. I, uh, I, you know, I just asked. I had, and I know I asked the most annoying questions too. I was like, should I list it as an advertising service or an agency or consulting service? I knew I had to ask all those questions because there is like weird tax codes and stuff like mm -hmm. that. I don't want to be taxed too much. Uh, but if I was really smart, I would have registered my business in Delaware and not paid any sales. <laughs> right. so, you know, I need to be able to get the mail. So, <laughs> so I, I just registered it at, at home and, uh, and Virginia is a great place for businesses mm -hmm. as well. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of connections you can make in the business world. And, you know, also with the hiring, you know, in my mind, I had a goal of, maybe getting a small business loan from the U.S. government later on, turning it into a grant or something like that. Uh, I don't qualify for it anymore, but it's okay because, like, we are still profitable. It's a small company, right? It's just me and one of the interns. Like, I pay myself enough. Uh, she gets paid, you know, well for, you know, better than I did in college. So I feel <laughs> right. I'm giving back. I'm doing it. But mm -hmm. her work is of high quality. And uh, I know if she she probably won't even last that long with me because sure. she, she'll probably get a full time. Uh, right. It's part time, right? You know, I only have so much for her. To do right. This. But part time, I mean, that's still better than absolutely nothing, especially if you're in college. I think, well, I've been there, you know, trying to balance how do I work as much as I can to make some money, but also get to class and do homework and such. Exactly. And, if you look at my pay stubs versus GPA, you can tell I spent more time at work. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's more important. You know? Right. I, I, know, I know the feeling. I used to have to. Uh, I used to work in real estate, and I used to have to give up weekends to go show houses and stuff like that. So uh, I drive like two hours from my college, James Madison University in Harrisonburg, to like Northern Virginia, and then I might go to DC, DMV, like to, or Maryland, right, uh, mm -hmm. showing houses and stuff like that. So. You lose a tailgate or two, but, you know, if you get a nice commission <laughs> check at the end of the month, you're, you're right. doing okay. Uh, but definitely could have used some of those hours, four hours, right? Studying right. a little bit more. <laughs> so, and we've been talking via email over the last few weeks, and you did some freelance work before you started up your, your company. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, why, why leave the freelance work to go into your own business? I mean, is it just better for right. you I and mean, looking long-term versus short-term or what was the decision-making yes. process like? Right. You know, I wanted to start a brand. That was really the goal with the, with the company, with starting it, right. Uh, give myself some validity. And there's a lot of research that says starting a brand versus your own personal brand will grow faster. It'll grow bigger. People trust it more because it's not an individual. It's an actual company. It's an organization. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, businesses aren't people. You know, that's all I have to say about that. Right. But uh, <laughs> it, it has the potential to go beyond me, right? Uh, I didn't name the company Tony Campos Marketing, <laughs> though that is, you know, about 90% of the company is just right. that. <laughs> Uh, I named it, you know, Instinct Analytics. Uh, one, I like, I like those words, right? I really am uh, a data guy. I'm, it's what I do 
all day. I look at numbers, I find where the revenue is coming from, I you know, make adjustments like that. But I, you know, a lot of it is acting on instinct. Uh, just using Google as an example, they hide a lot of information from you. Surprise, mm-hmm. surprise. Uh, so you have to go with like your gut, your experience a little bit to make those right choices, to know that, okay, uh, do I put more money in this? Do I need to bid more? What's going on? Do I pull out? Uh, where's my money going? Where are the sales? You've got to relax. You've got to just take it easy, <laughs> breathe, reevaluate your campaigns and, you know, Sometimes it's hard, sometimes Mm -hmm. it's hard. And it's great when you have a person to kind of filter you in between. Another task my intern does, right? She hears the clients. She then reports it to me because I am a passionate guy. If you come at me with that type of energy, I will absorb it. I will send it right back. (laughs) Uh, So it's good, it's good. She's a lot more calmer than me. So then, were you to get, once you get started, obviously you have your LLC, you have an intern. Now you got to start making money. I mean, were uh, you able to lean on old contacts from your freelance lurk work to bring them in? Or are they more like, well, if this was an established company, you're new, why should I trust you? Or is there that relationship established? Yeah, I did have, well, here's the, here's the thing. When I first, when the pandemic first started, the first thing I did was post on my Facebook and say, hey, if anyone has a business or works, at, uh, or works at a business that is struggling, I have marketing skills you can use. I'll do free audits, free checks. I specialize in X, Y, and Z, right? I can mm-hmm. look it over and give you recommendations. Uh, I just did that. I, just, I did that, I sent it out there and immediately I got some responses, right? And you know, it's not that, you know, I scratch my back or they scratch me. I scratch them type of thing. You know, the first person that asked me for help was a relative of mine. She had been in a situation where she's in the hospitality industry. They cut half the team, everyone. I'm saying like the whole corporate office cut in half. They lost their marketing person. She works in HR. She has a one-year-old baby, less than one-year-old baby at the time. Uh, And she asked me, like, can you please look over these ads for me? I I don't really know what I'm doing. And I'm like, yeah, of course. I don't want you to lose your job. Like, that's for sure, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, So, you know, at the time, I didn't really do it for much. Uh, I think I got like a $200 gift card. Uh, You know, it's okay. I spent it. I spent it on uh, house party stuff. It's all right. (laughs) The important part. Yeah. The. I was able to grow my portfolio that way as well, though. And I come with, you know, results now. Uh, I have case studies. And that really makes a difference. Uh, Mm -hmm. Like I said, people want you to have some experience. And as time goes on, I have experience. You know, it just keeps building. So relying on old contacts, yeah, for sure. That's all. You always have to double down and dig into them a little bit more because they'll bring you new ones, Uh, you know, Right now, we're at the stage where I'm starting to seek new contacts, right? We just relaunched our website today, actually. Uh, did a full redesign. We'll have a video showing the differences soon. It's just so much better. It's, I, I'm, I'm so much more happier with the, the layout of the website, uh, the, vibe, the whole vibe of it, right? It's like if the client doesn't like that type of energy, I know they're not the client for me. So, sorry, I got upstairs Go neighbors ahead. are having a house party, it sounds like up there. <laughs> so I don't hear it. <laughs> if I'm not be partying hard enough. Right. <laughs> if I'm a prospective client, you know, what are you bringing to the table to help me grow my business that's different than if I just, oh, look, I made a business page on Facebook or Instagram, or maybe I hit that Google ads button on my, on my homepage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you're not... You're just not going to do it right. I'm going to tell you that flat out. Uh, you know, a lot of times, yeah, the, the, the idea is if you have someone on staff who knows your account, who knows your marketing, who knows your business goals, that's going to be the best person to ask all the time, right? Can you afford to keep someone on staff like that? Probably not, right? Because it, it costs a lot of money to have an expert like that on staff, right? Uh, especially if you're not generating them seven digits at least, mm-hmm. right? 
What I can bring though, being a smaller startup uh, is a personal touch, right? Of and all my experience across industries. I don't have to experiment on your account, right? I've already done that. I'm doing that with other accounts. I know what works. Uh, so that that is a benefit itself. Uh, I'm an expert. I literally talk to Google support. I talk to Google reps, not just the people who try to sell you the product or like, hey, try our new ads. I talk to the people who know how to build these perfectly, uh, best practices. So. I really have that insight that, you know, it's kind of like playing poker, but I get to see what the dealer's passing out. And I mean, so, I mean, more specifically, I mean, what kind of services are you bringing to the table? I mean, what do you offer through your company? Sure, yeah. My specialty lies in paid advertising. So anything, uh, your social media is like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, uh, Google paid search as well. So like I said, any, whenever someone looks up for anything, right, they're going straight to Google or Amazon. Mm -hmm. Amazon itself is, I think, the third biggest search network now behind Google, behind YouTube. So, you know, that's a whole different arena that people, it's new. It's new, right? People are fighting for that. And you can see it. You can see it when you search. Uh, now, I've literally had people tell me, oh, you're the guy who puts all those annoying ads in front of me. <laughs> I'm like, no, that's, that's another marketer. That guy, he doesn't do a good job because, because you think it's annoying means he did a bad job, <laughs> right? He's obviously targeting off. Maybe that's like a mom or pop doing it, right? They just don't know. They just hit everybody in this, in this right. radius, right? I, I know better, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really narrow down and find your ideal client, find your ideal customer. Uh, so, you know, those are, oh, and along with that, you know, we do do website design. I've done some email marketing, uh, you know, that could be, my lists have ranged from 300 to about 5,000 people lists, uh, average, average click through of about 2%, uh, pretty normal industry standards, right? Uh, emails, a, it's a beast. Uh, mm -hmm. It's tough to, we've kind of, as marketers, disrespected that area, that privacy of your email, right? Uh, you can see like the related emails on top of your stuff. You're like, I didn't subscribe to this. Why is this in my <laughs> inbox? <laughs> or even if you did subscribe to something like some companies, not to throw Best Buy under the bus where you get five or oh, six yeah. emails every day and end up deleting just, them right away without reading them. They don't respect you. They really... And I, it's so hard already to just think about how many notifications you get a day, too many, right? How many of those stick though? How many of the memes that your friend are setting you, sending you? I don't know if your friends do that, you know, my friends <laughs> send me memes. How many of them stick though, right? Mm -hmm. You're still laughing about it the next day. Uh, and that's when you'll know the difference, right? And that's the type of service I provide, right? I make it prettier. I make it more branded. Uh, and I grow your sales. That is my number one objective, to grow revenue in a profitable and sustainable, scalable way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if I tell you, oh yeah, just give them half off, I'm sure that'll sell. Yeah, but is it gonna work in the long run? Just asking you to bump down your margins. Uh, so I like to work with their business goals. Uh, you know, and every, everyone's entitled to a free consult. Sometimes, the answer is so obvious, they don't want to pay me. Right. <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen it. I remember having a, this clay pot, this, uh, I don't know what you call it, a ceramic store, right? Where they mm -hmm. make your own ceramics and stuff like that. The gentleman was telling me, I want to fill up my couples classes. Like, what is going on? I really want to fill up that schedule. That's what I want to do. I was like, okay, that is the most clear answer of what you want I've ever heard. Uh, what are you doing already? And he's like, oh, you know, uh, offering 20% off. I was like, where? On your site? And they're like, yeah. Anywhere else? Are you pushing? No. Lo and behold, this guy's got 1,500 followers on Instagram local to the area. Mm -hmm. 
oh, you know, I was just like, <laughs> how about post? <laughs> just give it an idea. Just give it an idea. How about you post the couples every single time you at them, you get their permission, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. Simple stuff like that. You know, I don't just think about, oh, just buy ads, right? That's not going to work every time. Sometimes you don't have the budget. You have to work on your organic stuff. Just posting like that, though, really, really started to grow it. Uh, so, you know, he said, all right, I'll think about it. Next week, I saw him posting about it already. And then I saw the couples <laughs> posting about it already. And I was like, okay, well, as long as he's doing it, you'll be right. all right. <laughs> you know, you, you take some, you know, I, I give that information out for free because you never know. It might be mm -hmm. years down the line uh, where he needs me for another project, another store, or he recommends me to his other art buddy. Uh, and it might happen. Now, speaking of social media, I mean, do you do you push or follow much of the analytics? I know, like, I have business accounts, obviously, for the for the podcast. I can go in there and see my engagement on that post. I can look back a month, a year, whatever the case may be. Are you watching that for your clients and then kind of pushing that information to them, or do you let them manage that side of the house? Uh, it depends what the scope is, right, of the contract, right? I don't want to overextend myself or my employees, my intern, right? Uh, or even my contractors as well, like my network of people. Uh, it's very important to me to make sure we have those clear discussions of like, what do you, ex what are expectations, right? Uh, when you start to go out of scope, you know, I understand a, a pop-up, a burn-up, like a fire is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, if it doesn't take me time, I'm happy to do it, right? Uh, but you have to respect, you know, I'm a steward of my time, my employees time, uh, and the, you know, the time of my business. If my business doesn't grow because I'm, I'm taking jobs that are way out of scope, uh, you know, I, I can't hire someone later on. I can't give that opportunity out. Right. So we have to make sure that expectations are clear. Uh, it's in writing and, you know, if I see something, however, like just today, I noticed that these landing pages we were sending ads to last updated in 2018. I'm like, hey, boss, uh, you know, you don't have to change anything. You can literally just add a period, take out the period, add it again. I just want that date to say 2021. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, those, those are simple things. I can, add, mm -hmm. I can tell you that. Optimizations. That comes with the audits, right? Mm -hmm. If you need help with those things, implementing it, uh, then we have to discuss, you know, it's labor. So then if I'm a prospective client and I'm looking at your website, I'm thinking about pulling the trigger. I mean, what are some things that I should have prepared on my end to show you, this is what I've done. This is where I've gotten, but I'm kind of hit that plateau with the business side of it. How, how do I grow this? Well, the first thing I want to see is, do you have access to all your media accounts? Do you know what your company is reviewed on online? Uh, if you have all that, how are you tracking it? Are you using a sheet? Are you using, you know, uh, the CMS in the system? You know, what are you doing? Let me, sh let me see how you run your business, kind of, right? I'm not just a marketer at this point. I have to know, you know, the business operations of things. Mm -hmm. uh, and that can be difficult at times, right? Because you don't want to tell someone how to run their business. It's kind of right. like telling them how to raise their kids, right? And if you're that type of person, you know, God bless you. <laughs> but, uh, you're not going to last long over here. And not everybody wants to show you what's behind the curtain necessarily. Exactly. Yeah. And a lot of that uh, happens where, you know, I'm wondering, it's like, hey, you know, uh, you say you want four or five times X what your ad spend is. Uh, I feel like this is a high margin, like we can't change this, you know, and I have, you have to push back sometimes. Reality, you know, reality is clients want to get something for as cheap as possible. There's no question about that. We mm -hmm. all do. Uh, Raise now profits, you, lower the overhead. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. But, you know, you pay for, you know, you pay for quality. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, Back to it. Are you getting the results you like? And were you happy with the process? This is almost more important in the long term, right? 
sustainability, scalability once again, right? Then once you're, so say I'm, you know, I'm your client and I kind of let you, here's my, here's my revenue, here's what I've done as far as marketing campaigns. And I give it to you. I mean, how do you take it from there? I mean, say, because, well, again, using the podcast, I can track, like I said, on social oh, sure. media and, you know, I can track, a, um, thankfully, a iTunes and Spotify. And then my, my producer wrote an app so he can track all the downloads. I bring that nice. to you and go, I want to gain 10% over the 2021 20, calendar year. How are we going to do this? Well, I'd come with you. I'd need to see, like for a podcast specifically, I'd like to see what your output schedule is like, right? How mm -hmm. often are you, are you sending it, right? How is your uh, social media aligning with that? I mean, you guys sound intelligent. It sounds like you guys have a pretty good grasp. This is Casey knows what he's doing. Before. I'm just an idiot with microphone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? As he's got his place, you've got yours, right? right. You know? <laughs> but it would be important to me to like know how much more extra effort you'd want to put into it as well, right? Do you want to increase your effort or mm -hmm. do you want me to do it, right? Because there's at times where 10% more effort on your side or slightly different effort, we move it, can result in, you know, let's say 50% more followers, right? Something, something like that. I know it's a kind of an exaggeration, but that effort, the creator's effort, especially to do things differently, uh, has a much more bigger impact than let's, you know, raise your bids on these like platforms. Let's, you know, just spend more money at it. There's no way. It's, it's the, the touch is different, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, some things I would recommend, though, is definitely getting on like playlist and uh, other podcasts and stuff like that, you know, really start like gathering other people's resources, right? There's so much. Uh, I like the idea of, you know, guest hosting, podcasting, like collabs and stuff like that. I don't know how often you do them too often, but uh, that's a, you know, it's a great grab at other people's attentions. Uh, you'll notice that there's only about like 12 different types of people in the world and most of them are followers. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, they're down to follow another, hit that follow button is not that difficult, right? Right. <laughs> we think it is, we think it is, but it's right there most of the time. Well, then if I'm like, if I decide, yeah, okay, cool. I like what you brought to the table. I mean, how do we go about setting up a contract? I mean, can we just do it for a campaign or? X number of months, or even here's a five-year contract kind of deal, or how, how do you work that out on your side? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, really depends on the product or service we're given, right? What your timeline is for it. Is your business struggling right now? Do you need, is this like a life or death marketing service you need? Uh, we can adjust with those things, right? And it's usually when people are, you know, the house is already on fire is when they call right. the firefighters, right? <laughs> That's how it goes. Uh, but, you know, I like to do at least, at least a couple months at a time. I'd say my preferred is quarterly, right? We do mm -hmm. three-month trials, basically. Uh, one, because if we're doing paid advertising, it takes at least three weeks to get the right, in, a whole month, really. Uh, talking about Google specifically, two weeks for smart bidding to actually get enough data to start working correctly. Uh, and you don't know how much, depending on you know your budget, you might have spent half of it, you might spend a third of it by then. Uh, so we need that time to like let it perform, and then another two weeks to uh, actually perform. Another two weeks to actually have data to compare to, right? So uh, that is just an example for you know. When you're going on a paid media plan mm -hmm. uh, a website design or something like that a website build i'll get that done for you know under a month uh typically depending on the you know how big the website is what you need uh e-commerce things like that a lot of times i find that some of my big, biggest successes are three four hours of work uh it's just so fast that you know bam, like this was an optimization you needed. Uh, look, you're not targeting all languages, but they're looking up the same word. Uh, we, we should do that. 
uh, those are my favorite, right? Because mm -hmm. I make a big impact <laughs> a little bit of time. Right. Uh, and I still get paid the same. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you combat the people? You know, we live in that time and age where it's the instant gratification. You know, I just paid you yesterday. Well, how come I'm not seeing a 35% increase in revenue today? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those happen too. I, uh, I remember having one client specifically in the housing industry who's like a, a realtor of sorts. And, you know, those guys are awful. <laughs> but it gets realtors out here but uh he asked me he's like when do you think i'll get a sale all very much like that attitude right oh yeah like, oh you know uh smart bidding takes at least two weeks when do you think i'll get a sale <laughs> all right boss just give it 20 days you know uh i i do let them know the doc, like if I have to send them actual documentation from Google that says, hey, it takes two weeks to ramp up, that usually helps my case, right? Mm -hmm. And you hear it from the source. Uh, that's, you know, a strong ploy. Use someone else, uh, another entity to back up your opinion, right? Uh, and then tell them, you know, like, hey, you know, we want to get the best quality sale for you, right? We don't, I don't want to, I don't want you, just because your phone's not blowing up right now, you know, it means I don't want to give you junk leads is the thing, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm sure we've heard that a hundred times. I know I look at my LinkedIn, it's always, oh, do you want 50 more leads a week? You know, they're junk most of the time. <laughs> right. So a lot of it is about like, hey, I want to make sure I give you quality leads. I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste my time either. Mm -hmm. So letting them know that up the gate. And that's a, a lot about handling client expectations, pushing it back at the very beginning, right? Uh, I don't want to work with anyone who doesn't want to work with me. <clears throat> I'm, you know, getting older now. I, I'm almost 30 now. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, it's real. I, I just don't want to be working with people that are going to be not on the same page, right? Mm -hmm. We can be running the same race together, right? We can be racing each other while we're doing it. But if you jump in a car... Well, I'm just walking outside. I'm gonna be mad, <laughs> right? Uh, so it's all about managing those expectations, right? And I don't, you know, I don't overpromise. I mm -hmm. tell them from the truth, the experience of this is where I've seen success. Uh, this is what type of results you should expect. Uh, it takes X, Y, Z long time, you know. Uh, and it's always a buildup, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, going to, I go to physical therapy myself. So you can just tell I'm starting to break down. <laughs> uh, but they tell me that it's not, it's not going to happen tomorrow. You're not going to feel better tomorrow. Your shoulder's yeah. not going to get better. It's going to take time. It's been hurting for years. Well, you're going to have to spend years fixing it. Right. Uh, yeah. A lot of times I might just, if I see like an ad account, I don't like, I might just tell them, Hey, let's just end it. Let's mm -hmm. just, I'm going to restructure the whole thing for you. Um, sorry, we're not going to get results from this, right? And that's the, that is the hardest thing to do, actually. I think when they really want to keep going, because they, they felt that success in the beginning, and I'm like, I have to go tell them, I'm like, hey, I don't think it's worth your money. I've literally had to do that, done that during this pandemic already uh, with that same actual client. I remember about it, but he, you know, he had saw a success 10 days after his campaigns relaunched, right? We had a small launch, didn't work out that great. We relaunched 10 days later, he made a sale that where he made, oh, he didn't tell me how much he made, but I did get a commission check out of it. And I was like, okay, so I have an estimate of how much you made. <laughs> right. uh, it was definitely beyond 20 G's or more in that sale, but, you know, he's looking for that again. He was like, I only spent five, 600 bucks last time. Why am, why am I not seeing this again? He's like, we're, we've spent thousands of dollars. I'm like, Hey buddy, uh, first off, you know, we're not going to see that all the time, right? Your expectations seem a little like, it's kind of like the, where you should taste failure first, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't want to taste that again. You know how it feels right. And then you strive for success. But 
you know, like I said, I'd rather let him know right away and let I t tell him, I, I said, hey, man, like, it's just not going to, the laws have changed, literally the laws changed on us in the housing industry, right? As an example. And, you know, whether he was aware of that or <laughs> wasn't, you know, uh, it, you know, I, I made my best decision to just tell him, don't spend your money on this anymore. Mm -hmm. Maybe try doubling down on your website. Maybe try doubling down on Facebook. Maybe try another source of revenue, right? And that's where that business operations type of thing goes down to. And like you mentioned before, you know, it's, it's the relationship side, you know, people, you know, as we like to say in my company, people buy from people. So yep. establish that relationship. And yep. so, yeah, I know where you're coming from there. And but I'm curious on your side of it, going out and getting leads, you mentioned, you know, LinkedIn and I get it on Facebook and Instagram. Hey, you know, click this link and I can get you X number of followers, blah, blah, blah. I mean, are you doing anything like that? And if you are, how do you set yourself apart from the scammers? Because there's for every one legitimate coming, there's probably, you know, I'd, I'd estimate around a hundred scams going around. Right. No, I understand. I look at it this way. I'm not running other than LinkedIn job posts. I'm not running any ads right now. <clears throat> I do have um, some social, organic social, right? I do a lot of posting. A lot of mine right now is actually educational. I want to give people a benefit when they see something from me. I already have, purely organically, I have over 200 followers on LinkedIn for my company. That's in less than a couple months, right? Uh, I think that's okay. We're doing okay. I think we're, you know, I'm a pretty small company. I'm killing it. Uh, I like to give myself that little win. Mm -hmm. But all my posts are educational. All my posts have information. You will get a benefit out of it. Uh, I think today I just mentioned the relaunch, the rebranding. Uh, so they got to know. They got to know that. That's Sorry, if you didn't want that information, you got to know that. <laughs> but uh, the one before that I'm, was uh, specifically towards data people. Uh, anyone who works in sheets, right? I love working in sheets. I know I'm that weird guy who does a lot of reporting, right? I have to prove my point. I have to bring the data. And like I said, uh, I threw out a course that's for free. And I just said, hey, we have all of our employees, me and, you know, me and my intern. Right? <laughs> and, you know, we both completed that though. Uh, so, because I want everyone to be able to have a, like a basic I say basic, right? Level of understanding how to make their own report, how to hand that off to me. If I say, I need analysis on XYZ campaign, tell me how they did. Uh, don't just send that over in a Slack or something like that. I wanna see it on a graph. I wanna see some sort of data visualization. Uh, and that's, it sells, it really does. And if the clients can do it, if my employees can do it, if they can understand it right, uh, it makes it so much easier. It really does. Uh, so educating people, that's number one for me. Before that, I pushed Adobe Max conference. Or it's usually a $3,000 conference that they run last year. Uh, it was free because of COVID. It's still mm -hmm. free. It is still free. You can go online and learn how to use. Now, there's plenty of free software like Canva. But if you wanted to use like Photoshop, Lightroom, all of the Adobe suite products, you can learn from beginner level to master, master video editor and stuff like that. Uh, and it's free. Like I said, they're, they have the best people in the world in this conference, keynote speakers, all the good stuff. It was a $1,500 to $3,000 ticket before they pushed out for free. So of course I want my followers to know that, right? Though a lot of them are in the digital marketing space uh, because we're looking for that like type of contract us out work. That's kind of where I'm at right now, where I still get enough referrals that I can sustain the business, sustain my intern, right? Yeah. Uh, I really want her to get her in, her own intern soon. Right. So that is the goal for uh, 2021, to, for her to have her own support. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's the push. That's the push. Uh, the next stages in my advertising is there's a lot of free advertising credits out there. Uh, 
whether it's from Google, whether it's from Bing, whether it's from Facebook, whether it's from LinkedIn, Spotify, I literally have a folder in my, on my desktop of all the free advertising coupons and credits I have, which is about, you know, it's, it's enough. It's enough to shake your fist at, <laughs> uh, you know, triple digits, you know? <laughs> but uh, it is, it's a good amount of money and I know what I'm going to do with it. <clears throat> now that my website's relaunched and revamped, uh, I feel comfortable letting people land on that page, getting those form submits and stuff like that. And I'll have my own branded, uh, you know, campaign. So I expect to see results from that. Uh, it should be good. It should be good. I hope to, because uh, it's all my money right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, you have the you have a year under with Insync's analytical marketing. Excuse me. What I mean, what are you, what's your short term and what's your long term goals now with it? I mean, where do you want to take it from here? I mean. Should we expect to see you down on the big office building on Wall Street next year? Oh, uh, we're never going to have an office. <laughs> I know that for sure. Uh, I don't believe in the office, right? If I want to meet the employees, uh, it's going to be outside for a beer. Uh, I want, in the short term, I'd like to be able to hire someone full time. Honestly, uh, for, I want that much work coming in where I have to like work at it full time. Or, like, you know, they get to work at it full time. I'd like to keep growing. I'd like to offer, you know, a lot of it is about giving back, right? I know mentioned when I had over 150 applicants, right? That just tells you like right now there is a, a want and a need for this type of service. Uh, and if I can offer that opportunity, grow people a little bit more, because I know when I was in college, I wish I had gotten more exposure to these type of advertising, this type of platform, right? I think JMU just did a new program where they have a, curric a curriculum, a practice, um, where they help local businesses with like $500 budgets on Facebook or something like that. It's not a lot, but it, just doing that is huge for your exposure. You can literally bring that into a job interview. I found myself getting more interviews after like a simple certification test online uh, than I had after doing like 200 plus interviews right out of college, right? So mm -hmm. give back that opportunity. That's what I want to do. I say short term, yeah. Long term wise, I'd like this company to be doing more on the medium sized businesses. Uh, I'd say in the next five to 10 years, I would like to split the company up into divisions of small and local businesses, medium businesses, and those large brands, right? I've personally worked with those large brands before. Uh, you know, some being like, uh, if you look at my resume, I was in the automotive industry, uh, a big client of ours, you know, starts with H. I know a couple of them do, but ends with A, you know, uh, starts with T, ends with A. So those type of clients, while I don't want to get specifically back into the automotive industry, I would love to do more branding for these big organizations. Uh, that's where I wanna see the company grow to, uh, where we have the approval of these large corporations of, hey, you guys know what you're doing, uh, go ahead. Uh, I don't wanna ever be at the point where I'm crying for a client, where I'm bending over backwards and breaking myself. I mean, it's kind of the natural progression of agencies where you, know, you start to hire more and quality might start to slip and stuff like that. I don't want to be there. Uh, and I don't want to be the regular agency. So my important thing is to find good people out the gate. I did so many interviews. I did so many interviews for this one position. I did at least a dozen interviews uh, to find the right person, the best person. And uh, I'm very grateful that I was able to do that. But I want to be able to do that 10 more times, 100 more times eventually. I think this year in the short term, if I can do it one more time, I'll be pretty happy. Uh, if we can, in the next five years, the business basically runs itself, uh, that would be nice. Uh, I still wanna be in the weeds, right? I wanna be building out those campaigns, uh, that strategy. That's what I wanna be doing, at least for the next couple of years. After that, I'm going to take a more management type role where I'm 
more delegating, right? Uh, but it's important to me, I like to lead by example, right? Uh, it's probably the easiest way to do it. I think you can't, no one's gonna talk crap if you're leading by example. Uh, they have no right, right? And, uh, but at the three year mark, I'd say there's gonna be a clear transparency of I'm the boss. Uh, I know what I'm doing, we gotta get it done. Uh, not that I won't be willing to learn, but I have to make that transition at some point. And you mentioned going to school and such. I mean, is there anything that you've learned over the last year that you don't think you could have gotten out of the textbook necessarily or in the classroom? If that's it, something that you had to get by experience? Yeah, I mean, definitely, like I said, getting into those ad platforms because there's no, if you don't have the money, how are you going to know it can work, right? It can spend. Uh, you'll never know if you had a good TV ad unless you run a TV ad, right? Type of attitude. Mm -hmm. So, those are things that, you know, while school prepped me for them, I know how to speak, I know how to write well. Uh, the most important thing I learned at school was definitely how to learn. Uh, and I say, you know, that along with real life client management is not, you're never gonna learn that in a textbook. It's just not gonna happen. Uh, you can join as many, you know, fraternities, organizations as you want. Your social skills are nothing until you go up to someone, a local business and say, hey, do you want to make more money? <laughs> uh, and you don't, you don't know how it's going to come. I had a, a barber shop here in Arlington. Uh, my man asked me for a Google review. And I was like, sure, sure, sure. I'm a Google guy. You know? But uh, I said, sure, go home. I give this guy a review because he, he killed it. I love my, like right now I'm a couple days in already, but the fate is usually on point. Uh, I go home, I see he has two Google My Business accounts. If you're not familiar, it's just where your business is local, uh, locally listed on the side of the Google uh, page. He has two of them and each one has about a hundred reviews. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a couple days go by, I see my guy and uh, you know, it's very funny with the small business owners. Sometimes they don't like to let you know they're the owner. Uh, so I had to ask another barber. I was like, he's the owner, right? And he, they're like, yeah, yeah, that's him. So I came up to him. I was like, hey, how's it going, boss? I know you asked for one review last time, but what if I could give you a hundred? Uh, and I had his attention. I sold, I sold him right then and there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had my laptop. You have to be ready, right? You don't, you're never, you're never taught how to be ready. You've got to be ready for that opportunity, right? I had my laptop on me, the Google sticker on there. You know, I'm, I am that guy. Uh, so yeah, I ended up selling him right there. Those type of interactions, unless you go out and practice those type of things, you have to, I mean, role play in any sales role is huge, right? Uh, and then getting those questions, getting that feedback, you really got to put yourself in those situations. Uh, and it's scary. You know, sometimes people will just <laughs> slam that door on your face. Don't bother me again. Yeah, be prepared to fail. I can talk about that from experience, but hundred <laughs> percent, yeah, it's it's you know it's a grind, but I think working in business is a lot like being in finals, but finals never end. Finals. <laughs> Well, of course, if there's somebody listening out there, maybe they're doing some freelance work right now and they're looking to get into the market post-college and maybe they're just on the fence about launching their own company, what kind of advice would you offer them? I'd say, I'd say ask yourself, uh, do you want to launch your own company? Do you want to be a freelancer? Kind of like you mentioned earlier, uh, I've always had like a sales persona to myself and you kind of need that if you're going to build a business, right? You can be the best at what you do, but it doesn't mean you have to be a business owner. So just evaluate that because I don't want people, you know, obviously being my competition. No, <laughs> I just don't want them to waste their time uh, mm -hmm. because you can have such a great experience learning at an agency, building your experience like that. Obviously value yourself. If you think you can do it, don't let me stop you. Go ahead, get at it. But no, it's going to be a grind, okay? Uh, 
And what I found is usually your friends and family don't want your services, your business. So you got to be ready for that rejection, right? Uh, you might have better shots with complete strangers. You don't like talking to complete strangers? Oh man, dude, you're going to get on Omega. I don't, I don't, you know, do something, break your ice. Uh, but overall, I tell them to you know, educate yourself. If you know what you're talking about, if you really know what you're talking about, it's easy. You can talk about it with anybody. Uh, I love talking as long as I know what I'm talking about. I'm a Google Ads expert. Go get those certifications. They're free. I'm telling you right now, some of my best supervisors I've ever had did not have a college education. They were strictly Google ads educated. They were digital marketing educated. And, you know, you might lose an opportunity doing that uh, to some bougie company, but if you bring the results, uh, that's really, really all that people care about is your results. Uh, so do that. And, uh, Constantly test things, constantly learn stuff, uh, and educate yourself. And of course, last but not least, but where can people find you on the World Wide Web, and how can what's the best way to get in touch with you if they want to work with you? Yeah, I mean, if you want to work with me, the best way to do it is email me at camposaox at gmail.com. Uh, we have a website; it just launched today, so check it out: uh, instinctanalyticsmarketing.com. I know it's long, but it's it's the best service out there. So go ahead and check it out. Uh, we're on Twitter at Mar uh, Market with Data. I love that handle. I can't believe it was available. Uh, we're also on YouTube where we do post a lot of uh, interesting content for businesses to actually optimize their, you know, Google status and stuff like that. So that is purely my, the content stuff on YouTube, that's 100% educational and free. Uh, and I, I think everyone can benefit from it. Uh, we're on LinkedIn, Instinct Analytics Marketing. Give us a follow. Uh, we're always, that's usually the first place we post. I don't do any of the post one place and it's, it sends everywhere. Uh, you're not going to see that type of work from me. Sorry, it's all organic. Uh, and then we have an Instagram as well. Uh, Instinct Analytics is the, uh, the Instagram, I believe. But yeah, just give us a shout uh, on the on the webpage or the LinkedIn page, Instinct Analytics Marketing. Uh, and you can, my personal cell number is on there. Do not spam me, please. <laughs> but uh, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to text, to leave a voicemail. If you're really going through it, uh, you know, I, I'm giving free audits and uh, so, and strategy consult. So I, I do a lot of it for free because I'm interested. Uh, you know, in learning about different businesses and organizations, how things work. Uh, but also I know it's tough right now. Uh, and that, you know, a little bit can go a long way. I, I'm a big believer in, uh, in those long-term gains, right? I've worked sales. I've before early, early in my life when I was in community college, I was going, I was doing furniture sales. And I remember one time this lady said, my, my daughter's gonna come back. She just got married. She'll buy furniture from you four months later, end of the summer, almost end of my job. Uh, she came back. She's like, it was a long honeymoon. Let's buy the whole house. <laughs> right. So I, I've seen that type of, uh, you know, success, let's say, right. But I really do believe in people and, you know, uh, I believe in myself and my work as well, but uh, yeah, give a shout. If you come with good intentions, I will match that energy. So and stick analyticsmarketing.com. Well, perfect. Thank you again, Tony, for coming on the show. And thanks Thank for you, everyone for tuning in. We will catch you next time.